So welcome back to the channel everyone, Triple M here. Today we're taking a look at a brand new router that's also very affordable. Now today we're taking a look at the Jumplink RX 1500 and this is a brand new Wi-Fi 6 router. Now if you guys don't know what Wi-Fi 6 is, I am going to touch on it a little bit. But for this video we're going to do a quick unboxing, we're going to take a look at the specs, set it up, see how it performs overall. Let's go ahead and jump into it. Now, of course, if you guys are new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button in the top right. Smash that notification bell. Let me know if you have any questions or comments. Drop them in the comment section below. Before jumping to the overview, this is the AX1500 dual band AX Wi-Fi router. And this is a next generation Wi-Fi router. And this is noted by having the Wi-Fi 6 next to it. It does have MU MIMO as well as OFDMA, which is a new technology for this. And we're going to get into some of the specs and ports in a little bit. But first, let's talk about Wi-Fi 6 and what it is. So if you're familiar with some of these terms, over the years you might have seen Wi-Fi 802.11b, A, G, N, and AC. So that naming convention or that naming over the years has gotten a lot of people confused and not know what to buy. So the new name for the technology associated with AX is 6. Now with that new change, there's a lot of cool updates that's carried over to Wi-Fi 6. Now, of DMA are orthogonal frequency division multiple access technology. Now, it's a part of AX and it basically divides the channels into smaller segments or smaller lanes, if you guys can picture that. And this allows for simultaneous communication. Now, even though OFDMA doesn't technically increase your speed, guys, it just allows your device to communicate to each other in a more efficient manner. So here are some of the technical specifications of this device. Now, of course, this is a dual band concurrent 300 megabits per second on the 2.4 gigahertz and 1200 megabits per second on the 5 gigahertz. Now that gives you a total speed of up to 1500 megabits per second. Now this is a sixth generation device, of course. We just talked about it, Wi-Fi 6, AKA AX Wi-Fi. Now it is backwards compatible with 802.11 A, B, G, N, A, C, as well as AX. Now these does come with four antennas, two, two point four and two five gigahertz and this does have a tri-core 1.5 gigahertz 64-bit ARM processor 256 megabytes for RAM 128 ROM so it does have some internal storage not sure how that's utilized but um gives you simultaneous 4k VR HD streams efficient data transmission on the OFDMA single mobile speed up to 1.2 uh, gigabits per second all right so here's the box let's go ahead and see what's inside Ethernet cable power adapter you have some um, gifts and prizes that you can win if you guys purchase it. I also have the warranty card information. You do have your quick start guide. Uh, definitely worth reading in my opinion. If you guys are gonna purchase something like this, you wanna make sure you know um, how to set it up, how to properly use it. So definitely gonna check this out before I go ahead and set this up. So here's the device itself, guys. Looks pretty good, feels lighter than I expected. Do have the antennas in the back, fold all the way down. One's on the side, of course. So it depends how you um, mount it. Um, do have a lot of options and flexibility there. So on the back, you do have four LAN ports. You do have a WAN port. These are gigabit ethernet ports, guys. WPS button and your reset switch. You do have your on and off button right here. So not much else. You do have an LED indicator right here in the front. A lot of vents all over, including on the bottom of the device. So what we're gonna do is connect the WAN port to our modem and this is the blue port in the back and that will essentially provide a network connection go ahead and power it up and once we power this up the easiest way to get this configured is to go to your wi-fi on your computer and we're going to look for the jump lake rx4 so click on that we're going to connect all right so it is connected once it's connected guys launch your browser and we're just going to put in 192.168.0.1 once you do that, it will bring you into the launch page right here. And this is where you'll go ahead and set up everything on your network. So we're gonna go ahead and um, default username and password is admin, admin. I'm gonna go ahead and launch the setup wizard. All right, so it's detecting addressing by type. So uh, right now it's set to WAN, but if you hit the drop down, you do have the option for static as well as PVP. OE. So as far as configuring your wireless, you have the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz. So this is the name that you're going to see when you look for it. And this is for the 5G. Now, um, this is default, so you can change it, whatever you want. If you want to change it to Mojo, I can go ahead and do so. And I can go ahead and put in the password. For now, I'm just going to leave everything as is and hit continue. 
All right, so there's the default username and password that I'm gonna use for this tutorial. But definitely, if you purchase this router, make sure you change the default stuff. You don't want anyone to be able to connect to your network without you knowing. All right, click OK. And what it should do is should go ahead and do a reboot of the router and this should save you wireless settings. So if you did go ahead and change the SSID, change the password, once the router reboots, you need to go back here and you need to connect to it again. And then you will need to go ahead and put in the new password. So I'm gonna connect to it again. I'm gonna connect and this time you can see it prompt for a password. I'm gonna put in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we can go ahead and check that right there. Everything looks good. We're connected and here we go into the network interface now if you guys don't have this page same way to get in guys you're going to put in the same 192.168.0.1 so here is the management page for your network guys so uh, you see the status right here we only have one device connected right now now next is your device information nothing too fancy here WAN information as well here's your LAN All right, so this is the device that I'm using right now. So it shows that Azul is connected. And so on the network, uh, on the WAN, it gives you the route, connection mode, IP, MTU, and MTU is your short for maximum uh, transmission unit, guys. 5G wireless, your quality of service right here. All right, so you can't enable that. It's up to you guys. I find that I, I usually run into more issues with QoS. Um, then without it, so I normally leave it off. Here's the time, configure the time router, the system will sync with other time servers, all right? It look like I'm in the wrong time zone, so I'm gonna go ahead, go to Eastern time, save and apply. All right, there we go. Do have an option to set up a guest network as well, so it should be uh, about the same thing, guys. You click enabled, there it is. You can just name it guest authentication if you guys just want to leave it open completely up to you we can't pick what kind of authentication not going to set this up but um if you guys have people coming over you don't want to give out your password you can set up a just a default password party one triple m's party or whatever just something temporary because you know people are going to ask you for your password all right so over security you do have some options here you do have the option to filter url so you can blacklist you can whitelist whatever the case is if you guys don't want to watch youtube you can go ahead and blacklist that porn sites if you have kids here whatever the case is you do have options to set up some kind of WAN access so parental control comes in handy because you can select services and access and schedules per device so if your kids have an ipad and a tablet and a computer and you want to restrict the times maybe on weekdays you want them to go to bed at eight o'clock you can go ahead and set everything up right here so pretty cool option guys so that's a basic overview of the interface like i said this part is very important because i know uh, for a lot of people that's not techie that's not into networking they need to know how to get into the router how to do basic setup how to um, troubleshoot and how to um, provide or deny access based on what criteria you pick so next thing i want to do i want to do a couple of speed tests want to test it in the room downstairs outside just to see what kind of speed and how good of a coverage we're getting from this new wi-fi 6 router so the first test is uh, right next to the router. It's about five feet away, guys. Just wanted to let you guys know that I'm paying for 400 megabits per second download and 20 megabits per second upload. Let's see what we get for the first test. And this should be a base point to what we're expecting on the other test. So you can see it came out here with 434 megabits per second download and 23.1 megabits per second upload. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna stay on the second floor. I'm gonna go about uh, three walls over about 30 to 40 feet away and gonna run the test again with everything going through the walls i do expect some degraded results so let's go ahead and see what we're getting as far as download we're getting 304 megabits per second and upload look like it's going to remain the same about 22 uh, 23 uh, megabits per second all right, so we lost about 100, but like I said, with uh, penetration of two to three walls, that's expected. However, the speed that I have is still pretty good. So now we're going to go downstairs. Uh, this is going to be directly under the router. I want to see what I'm expected to get once it passed through that crawl space from the first floor to the second floor. 305, still really good. And um, upload 
going to be constant. We're looking at about 23 megabits per second. So that's really good considering that we're downstairs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go on the opposite side of the house. I'm going to be in the garage. So it's going through the floorboard. It's, it's going through about three walls. And uh, if I can get good signal here in the corner of the garage opposite from where the router is located, then this is a good indication that my whole house should have good coverage. So the ping is still really good guys, 13 milliseconds. So we haven't lost anything as far as latency. So that's really uh, good to know. As far as the downloads look like we're about 270, um, which is still really good. Going down to 270, uh, still good speeds. I can see someone's paying for 20 or 30 megabits per second. Uh, they might have issue because their speed's getting cut in half. So depending on what speeds you have, guys, this might not be a big deal. For me, it's not because I'm still getting really good uh, speed as well as signal in the worst case scenario, the bottom corner of the garage. Remember that the router is on the second floor, guys. What I wanna do is take this outside, want to see what happens if I'm mowing the grass, if I'm still going to be able to use the Wi-Fi. So this will be a game changer if I do get good signal. Also, just want to know that I'm about 60 to 65 feet away from the router. Router's on the second floor. I'm all the way in the middle of the road. So let's see what we're getting. So for that one, I got 189 download and 9.42 upload. So still decent speeds to upload. I uh, got cut in half. With everything considered, I'm still getting real good speed and, and I'm definitely uh, pleasantly surprised by the performance of this device. So with all that said and done, this is a great device in my opinion. Reasonably priced, you're paying $89 guys, and this is for the new Wi-Fi technology. And I was pleasantly surprised. Uh, the ping was really good throughout the test, which is a big plus. Uh, speeds were awesome in the household, didn't lose that much. I feel fairly comfortable that I can use this as a standalone and be able to get Wi-Fi coverage anywhere in my house. So I'll go ahead and drop a link in the description where you guys can go ahead and pick it up. Also, I will be looking for coupon codes. I'll put those in the description as well. If you guys have any questions about this device, please drop it in the comments section below. So thank you guys for watching. Hit the thumbs up on this video, share this video, and I'll catch you on the next one.